Hello, welcome to part two of the of the Stein mug tutorial, coffee mugs with this with, as a Stein. Um, and last I left you, we had modeled the whole uh, the model of the mug, but now I want to give it some nice color and texture and things, and put the logo on there like it used to have. Um, looking at my mug, it looks like the handle is a little too big or it sticks out a little too far. So I'm going to go ahead and tab in, and we're going to fix that really quick. Um, I'm going to circle select these guys and I'm going to scale it on the x-axis just a bit and then I'm going to move it on the x-axis. I'm going to go ahead and turn on my uh, proportional editing. Move that in a little bit. So it's more like that. Let me move this guy here. Okay, so that's better. Alright, so I'm going to save that. Um, okay, so now what we need to do, we could just give it a color here in our materials tab and just like, uh, let's just say, let me make a little kind of a tan color. And if we went to the viewport shading, um, material preview, then you could see kind of what it looks like. And also if we go here and turn on scene lights, scene world, we can get an idea of what it would look like in a render. So, I mean, that would work you know, on a coffee, on a desk somewhere, yeah, a nice random coffee mug. But we're, we're, we're working on a nice one, one that my grandpa had. Got to make it look pretty and nice. So uh, I'm going to set my scene up a little bit here before I get into the, uh, the texture. Actually, you know what? Well, let's save that for the end. Let's let's focus on, on the texture mapping and all that. Let's turn off the shadows and scene lines and everything. And I'm going to go to the front view. And let's add uh, some UV coordinates, um, some seam edges here. So I'm going to tab into edit mode. And I want the inside of the mug to have its own spot on the UV map. So I just hold down Alt and right click. Uh, in this case, it would be easier to turn off the, um, the X-ray. So if I go back to my regular solid view, I can turn off the X-ray there. Okay, and if we turn off the subdivision, we can see the inside vertices, but you can also do that if you turn that on and hit the on cage as well. And you can see now it has all of the vertices smoothed out just like it would if it rendered. So, okay, so I'm going to add control E. I'm going to add in a seam, mark seam. And what that does is adds a, a red, orange, kind of a scarlet line there. And that's going to be a separate piece on the UV map. So let me separate my window out here. If I grab the right, it, not the right one. Uh, come on now. There we go. I'm going to use this one as a UV editor. And right now I haven't unwrapped them yet, so there's there's nothing to see here just yet. But if I were, I'd hit U and go unwrap. It'll unwrap my UVs. And you can see there's two separate pieces here. And that's the, um, the inside that we just added the loop around. And then the weird looking mess over here is the outside. And it's a mess because it's not a, a solid um, model. It's got some... some um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Some ornateness. Some. It's not basic. It's it's extravagant. I can't. My brain's a little foggy right now. But um, complex. It's got some complexity to it. So in any case, so we need to we need to tell it what to do with this complexity. So what I'm going to do, easiest thing, um, is just select. Actually, what we can do the easiest thing, just go into front view, select all of everything, and go you. Uh, project from view and boom it does it like that so then you just have to paint it and, and make it look pretty so you can do that if you like makes it a little easier I uh, just gotta put the logo here and then it'll automatically put it on the other side too however it's gonna be mirrored and it won't look uh, as realistic and nice as you might like it so we need to put in a little more elbow grease to this so we got uh, need to actually tell it what to do with with our um, with our UV coordinates so I'm going to select this loop here on the inside and even though it's uh, already got a line there for the the UV coordinates it's it's still the same model so um, if we were to go to face select and I select that hit control L it's only going to select what's inside that UV group um, and right now for this one it's just the inside of the mug that works that way with um, the face select but as you can see here um, let me turn off my screencast keys there for a second. Boop. You can see 
it delimits there on the seam. So if you had different materials applied to this, which we will in the end, because I'm going to put gold as its own separate material for the the uh, top and bottom there. If I can uh, show you my reference again. With this gold, thin gold band around the top and around the bottom. So those will be their own separate materials. Um, and then the, go back here, the the tan and white little crackulature with the CB's Can Do logo will be uh, a different material. So bring that over there. Okay. So the way we can do that, let's go back to the vertex vertex mode there. And I'm going to go ahead and turn my screencast keys back on. I want to select this loop here. And it's going to select all the way down and around to the bottom. I don't necessarily want it to select all of that. Um, but I want it in the in the middle, in the inside of the mug, so it's not just a, again, let's uh, hit everything, you unwrap. Now, I mean, we could leave the, the inside like this. I guess, I guess I, get, I will go ahead and do that. But if you wanted to add any detail on the inside, like for example, the, the slight little bit of, of uh, coffee drips that you can see, if you wanted to add some of that on the inside, you'd want to go ahead and add a little bit more detail to the uh, the UV map there on the inside of the mug but I'm just gonna leave it as is uh, just for for uh, time's sake so uh, I need to unwrap the outside now I'm gonna go ahead and do that similar to uh, how it would have been had we um, just did the project from view but um, I want to do it to where it's like I said similar but better so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab the edge select this time. I'm going to select all that edge there again and I'm going to hold down shift and right click on the inside that's selected so it's not selected anymore. I'm just going to have from the top of that original seam and it's going to come down the outside of the handle and around and I want to go ahead and add another loop. I'm going to hold down alt and shift. I'm going to select this loop here then I'm going to hold down shift and I'm going to deselect all these guys here. So what I've just done is I've added this seam from this seam or this new seam to the original seam on the inside of the mug goes down the outside of the handle down to the bottom where I there's when I hit control E mark seam it's going to have a seam here so the bottom will be its own individual piece as well as the inside if that makes sense so let's go ahead and do that control E mark seam now if we hit everything unwrap you can see this here is now the bottom and we probably won't really need to mess with that much unless in your scene that you're going to set up with this mug, you have the mug like it tipped over or something. Somebody wrote something on the bottom, perhaps. Let me look at my mug. Actually, on the bottom, there's a, a logo for American... Uh, what does it say? American Art Capital something. My eyes are not as good as they used to be, and I can't read the tiny text anymore without a magnifying glass, and I don't have a magnifying glass at this time. In any case... Uh, so we got those two areas. Now I want to do inside the handle around there. Control E. Mark that seam. And then I'm going to come down on this other side. And since uh, we added that handle to those faces and then added that loop in the middle of that, there's not a corresponding e even loop on the other side of the mug. So we can either add one in or we can just do it offset a little bit. So I'm just gonna do it offset a little bit. So I just went in and selected that, and now we need to do like we did on the other one. Deselect all of these other guys. You don't have to deselect these, but it makes for a prettier UV map once you do. So I'm gonna go Control E, go and mark that seam. And now if we were to unwrap, it should look quite a bit better. So there we go. So let me make this window a little bigger. So you can see the two halves of the mug they're not quite even. One of them has, if we look at our top view, you can see this side is going to be a little smaller than this side because it has that extra little bit there. Now, if you wanted to go ahead and add in a loop there, you could. It's not real necessary just to do it solely for the purpose of uh, having an even model. I mean, it's, it's not worth doing just solely for the purpose of having an even texture map unless you just want to do it. In my opinion, it's, you know, we'll just do it this way and it'll look just as good. Okay. All right, so we got our UV maps on our mug and it's about ready to start texturing. I want to uh, um, revise the layout here a little bit. 
uh, I pretty much just want to rotate it. So I'm going to select everything here in this um, uh, in the window for the UV editor. And one thing I like to do is just personal preferences. Uh, Blender's done it for in the in the beginning, and then when when we got to the later versions, they they popped the all the menu stuff to the top. I prefer it to be on the bottom. So I'm glad they still have the feature. You right click somewhere on there and go header, flip to bottom, boom, and everything's down here. That's where I always look for things since that's the way Blender used to do it all the time. Yeah, I know I need to get with the get with the times, old man. But you know, can't teach an old dog new tricks a lot of times. But in any case, so all my tools are down here. So I'm going to select everything, rotate it 90 degrees. I just selected everything and R rotated 90. Okay, and that rotated it all the way I want. I'm going to scale it a little bit on the x-axis there to get it inside there. And this is the inside of the mug. It doesn't need a lot of detail, so I'm going to just select one of the vertexes, vertices, Control L. I'm just going to scale that down, kind of get it out of the way. Just move the very bottom of the mug over here. Maybe scale that up a little bit. Maybe I'll find that logo. Um, I found the CB's Can Do logo, but maybe I'll try to find that other one. But as you can see, the mug itself is a little taller than this is making it out to be. So I'm going to select these guys, scale it up on the. When you're when you're messing with um, with UV maps, uh, the dimensions are a little different. And the 3D viewport, you scale, you hit you hit the S to scale, and then you hit X to go left and right. Y is going to go up and or back and forth, and then Z is going to go up and down. When you're messing with the two dimensions of the of the uh, UV maps, left and right, and up and down, it doesn't have depth. Uh, you have to scale it either on the SX on the X axis or on the Y axis. If you hit Z, SZ, nothing really happens. It just scales it up and down. So I want to make it a little taller, so I'm going to scale it on the Y axis. I'm just going to do that. Okay, and then we'll move it into here. Okay, so now I have my UV coordinates um, created. Uh, now we could just go, we could export. There used to be a way to do it, to export the, okay, you have to be in edit mode to do it, UV, you could export the UV layout, and it'll just make a PNG uh, with these, with the grid stuff here. And that works, but I want to do a different method, and I'm going to start texture painting. So I'm going to tab out of edit mode, I'm going to go right here in object mode, and I'm going to go to texture paint. Now, since we don't actually have a texture set up yet, it just makes it kind of a default purple color. So I'm going to go up to item, actually tool, and it doesn't have a texture, so I'm going to hit the little plus sign, and I'm going to say base color. And I don't want this too much of this tan, so I'm going to make it a little more pale, a little brighter. About right there. I'm going to say OK. And you can see it automatically painted the whole thing this base color. And I'm going to go ahead and rename it, if it'll let me. I guess it won't let me. Okay, so now we have a texture map for our mug. However, it's all the same color, so I don't know where anything is. If I were to take this into the Photopea, the Photoshop uh, online version, and try to start messing with stuff, I kind of just have to guess. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and paint the mug so that it's a little different from the background. So... Um, let's see if I can remember how to do this. Let's... Uh, Go to a slightly different color right there and just start painting. You can see it's just a slightly different color. I don't know if you'll be able to see it on the video, but I can see it. It's a little bit less colorful. And if I come back to, um, if I come out of texture paint mode to object mode, you can see here on this texture map how I can see where the, where I've painted the little bit lighter color is. So, I want to do that on the whole mug so I get the whole thing kind of outlined. So let's go back over here, go back to texture paint. And one way you can do it, like if I'm just painting here, it's not painting on the on the back sides. So we got to kind of do like uh, when we're modeling, we got to kind of turn on the x-ray mode. The way we can do that, um, there's not an actual x-ray mode, but if we come all the way down here, make sure you're in your tool settings under texture paint, go to options, you can turn off the occlude and the back face culling. And then when you paint, it paints across everything that's underneath your cursor at the time. So I painted, I just painted the whole inside of the mug. 
there. You can just kind of rotate it around, just kind of go over it again, just to make sure you get every nook and cranny underneath everything. All right, so that's pretty good. Let's come back out of texture paint, object mode, and you can see here in my my uh, image, my texture map here, that uh, we've got the, the darker tan, that's the outside, and the lighter tan, that's the actual surface, the UV coordinates that the map, uh, the texture map is going to be on. Okay, so now I can save this image, um, save as, and I'm in my G drive, blender files, and I'm in the tutorial. So I'm gonna call this one uh, Stein Mug Texture. Actually, let's call it uh, Albedo. That's kind of what the game engines call the regular texture map. So we'll call it Steinmug Albedo. And I prefer JPEGs myself. Saves a little bit of space. PNGs tend to save largely. But if you're going to make it JPEG, make sure the quality is 100% or it'll get kind of pixelated. So I'm going to save that as. All right. And now the software I've been telling you about, Photopea. A friend of mine I worked with before told me about this software. Like I said, it's a lot like Photoshop. You don't have to pay any subscription or anything. You do have to worry about this, uh, these advertisements over there. You can play, or you can pay a monthly subscription to get rid of the ads, but I figure, hey, I'll deal with the ads. So I'm gonna open this from my computer, go to my G drive there, go to my Blender files, go to my tutorials, and my Steinmug Albedo. All right, so here it is. Now you can do, like I said, in uh, pretty much everything you can do in Photoshop, you can do it here in um, in Photopea. Um, I mentioned the mug originally had a CB's Can Do logo. That's this one here. My grandfather was in the Navy, and that's his uh, his. He wasn't a sergeant. He was a CB. I, um, I guess he could have been. Uh, I don't know Navy. Uh, ranking structure. I was in the Air Force National Guard myself, so I know Air Force and a little bit of Army, but they're all a little bit different. But anyways, I'm going to go right-click. I'm going to copy this image, pop back to Photopea, right-click, actually go to Edit, and it's not going to let me paste it. So let's see, maybe it'll let me drag and drop it. Unknown file format. Oh, it's probably... Let me see if I can save it. Oh, okay, it's a PNG. I thought it was going to be a Web WebM or something or other. I don't remember. Anyways, okay, so i got to navigate to my tutorials folder yet again. And CB's logo. Just go ahead and save it there. Boom. All right, so now I can go File, uh, Open and Place. And we're going to go CB's logo. And boom, there we go. So we're just going to scale that down and put it right about where it should go. Boom. And I'm going to hold down Alt, click and drag over to the other side of the mug. Boom. So now we could save this and it would look pretty decent. But as you can see in the source or the reference, it's got kind of a cloudy, like a tan and white material, or I guess in real life it's not called a material, a tan and white uh, look to it, kind of a cloudy look. So I'm going to do that, and then I'm going to try to see if I can add the little craculature look to it as well. So let's see what we can do. All right, so let's go back to the background. I like to uh, create a duplicate of it. Click and drag down to the little new there, the new pay, new layer, and it creates a copy of it. So if I go now to the filter, and I go to filter gallery, it brings up all these different filters we can try out. Now, it's not going to be under artistic or brush strokes or distort or stylizer. It's going to go down all the way to texture. You can see one called cracular. 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 So I click on that one. And after my old computer catches up, you can see kind of what it's going to look like. So I want it to be a little more smaller, a little smaller. So I'm going to dra drag the crack spacing down a little smaller. If it'll cooperate with me here. There we go. And then the crack depth, make that a little smaller. See so if I can just put, whoa, that jumped back up. What was it? Seven. Now, sometimes if your computer's kind of slow like mine's getting, I need to get a new computer soon. Um, 
but yeah, it takes a little bit to catch up. So, okay, so down to seven, crack depth. I'm gonna make that a little lower. Let's try, see what three looks like. Okay, so a little better, and crack brightness. Uh, let's see what five looks like. Okay, so that darkened it. So nine was actually maybe even 10. 10's probably not perceptible. Yeah. I mean, you can kind of see it, but it's not very visible. So back to nine. Okay, so I think that'll work. I'm gonna go ahead and say okay. All right, now the reason I made the copy is so that I can erase parts of it uh, to kind of give um, the underneath uh, a little bit better blending like on the edges here because if these were to line up you'd see a definite seam there but if I kind of erase it out a little bit it'll be a little more smooth and another thing I want to do let me go ahead and turn that layer off is I want to sample my colors here so I'm going to grab my foreground color and click here and it's going to select that main tan of the mug that we painted on in Blender and say OK. And then my background color is white. And that's what I want because what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Filter, Render, Clouds. And you can see it rendered some clouds with the, the light tan and white. Now that's not exactly the size I would like it to be, but I guess it'll be OK. Um, let me undo that. Actually, Control Z. I want to do that on its own layer. So let's see if it'll do it now. Render clouds there we go okay so I'll turn that off and on all right so I'm gonna make the transparency from that just a little bit lighter Not like there then the craculature also change that a little bit lighter there we go now I'm gonna hit E to grab my eraser tool well sometimes these keyboard shortcuts don't work in this photopea unless it's full screen but I don't want to mess with full screen just yet. So, um, all right. So we got the brush size right now. It's 15. I'm going to set up quite a bit larger. Maybe not quite that large. Set the hardness down so it has a nice soft edge, feathered edge. Maybe a little bigger. Okay. So now I'm going to kind of gently brush in here. Actually, let's undo that because that's get back to the point. There we go. All right. Set the opacity down to about let's say 30, not three. 30. There we go. Now I can just kind of brush out around the edges where the craculature might show some tiling effect. I don't want it to show that. So I'm just going to go around the border of the edges like so. And the same thing on the clouds. Difference clouds on the edges around the edges of the inside and the bottom. Okay, so I think this is probably pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead and save it. Save it as a PSD first. Okay, and saved it and downloaded it uh, to my downloads folder. But now I wanna export as a JPEG. Make sure it's 100% quality. I'm going to, and let's, See if I can make it a little, let's make it double the size, 2048. Should have done that in Blender, I guess, but, okay. My. So this, this is gonna be a little bit low resolution image, um, but we'll go ahead and save it. Okay. Are you using an ad blocker? Yes, I am, Photopea. I'm, I'm sorry. Please watch our ads. Okay, we got ads over here, so I'm blocking some of them, but not all of them. Um, okay, so we got that saved. Let's go back to Blender. <clears throat> and I'm going to image open. And let's look at the... Okay, so it's going to be in my downloads folder. Let me pause and bring that in. I'll be right back. Okay, so as you can see, I brought it in here. I had to rename the original one to... I just put a one at the end so I didn't override it with the new one. <clears throat> so I'm going to open that one. There we go. And if we pop back to texture paint mode, we can see what it looks like on here. Okay, so not too bad. The craculature is kind of obvious there. Uh, one quick thing, while it, it, I'm trying to rotate and zoom in on it and it's not centered up and it's not working the way I want it to, 
If we come back to object mode and select that one and hit the period button on our keyboard, actually, um, on our numpad, the period button on our numpad, then it'll zoom in and out the way you want, a little, little easier. Okay, so we'll go back to texture paint. All right, so the CB's logo is a little too big, um, and the craculature is a little too visible, if that makes sense. So I guess, I guess what I'll do, I, I've got an idea. I've got an idea. It'll take a little bit longer, um, but uh, maybe we can work on that in a part three. Um, didn't want to make so many parts of this simple mug tutorial, but uh, looks like it's turning into that. Okay, so let's look at it from the front. Looks like um, just to see which side this is, let me go back to my options, turn these two layers back on. Uh, I'm just going to put a little swipe of purple across here just to see which side this logo is on. Okay, it's on that one there. Okay, so I'm going to undo that. Okay, so what we need to do is make both logos a little smaller, and this this one on the right needs to come uh, go up a little bit and to the left a little bit once it's smaller. And so I'm going to hold down Control and hit 1, and it's going to show me the back. And this one really needs to go um, closer to the handle. So let's pop back to Photopea. Bring it back over there. So this one, actually both of them need to be scaled down. So let me grab, excuse me, both of those. Control T. Ah, again, um, I'm in. I have Firefox open here. If you hit Control T in Firefox, it opens a new tab. If this was full screen, if I hit F11, makes it full screen. Now I hit Control T. <laughs> it still does it. It didn't used to. Um, yep. Okay. Uh, so I guess what we have to do is go uh, transform controls. I'm just gonna scale it up. If you hold down. Well, normally, if you hold down shift, it would scale it um, um, proportionally. But since this chain is turned on, you don't have to hold down shift. So let me undo, because I'm not sure where I started. There we go. So just scale it about, let's go 85%. So we'll just go up here and type in 85. Boom. All right, so now I can double click, set that transform, and just get my one logo here. I like, to, I like to turn on the auto select, so I can just click the layer I want. And that needed to come about there. And this one needed to come probably about there. All right, so let's s export as JPEG. Same thing. Save. Okay. All right. Okay, so I've done that, downloaded and everything, so let's Move this out of the way, and we can go image, reload. Didn't work. Okay, so let's open. Is it not the right one? I thought I saved it, maybe. Look over here. Sorry about that. Okay, my mistake. When I downloaded it again uh, from Photopea, it renamed it to um, parentheses one. So I'm going to delete the original. Or not the original, but the one I had worked on. And rename that one. Take off. There we go. All right. So now, also, I removed the craculature. Um, no, I didn't. But we're, we're not going to mess with that right now. Sorry. My brain's kind of starting to get frazzled. Okay. So you can see the logos are a little smaller now. There we go. And <laughs> looks like it's too far to the left now. This one here looks pretty good. It does look like it needs to be rotated some. Uh, actually, Photoshop is a lot easier to use. Um, I say a lot easier. It's about the same to use, but it saves things easier. Um, in the meantime, between now and part three, um, I'll go ahead and clean that up in actual Photoshop. Um, you can use Photopea if you like, but I'll use Photoshop and uh, get it nice and clean. And then in part three, we'll go on and continue to add a few more things to make it look nice and photorealistic. So thanks for watching. We'll catch you in part three.